Hello, BookTube, and welcome back to Garb August 2024, Garb August 3D. <laughs> this is Criminali's event, his most beloved event. This is a BookTube event designed to celebrate the reading of trash. Ollie makes us read trash all throughout the month of August, and everybody loves it. I wasn't aware yesterday, I'd somehow missed, that he put up a Happy Garb August video with all sorts of cameos from everybody involved and lots of other people as well. Definitely go to his channel and watch that video. That Happy Garb August video is hilarious. Uh, although I have to stick up for my boy Tolstoy. <laughs> but anyway, in, in August, we read trash. We read garbage. We read books that we can happily wallow in. And I love that. Absolutely love it. I read a lot of garbage that you can't wallow in. I read a lot of guilty garbage. Garbage that doesn't think it's garbage. Garbage that knows it's garbage and wants to fool you anyway. All the evil sides of it. So the innocent sides of it are fine by me. I want them. Uh, but the booktuber Joseph Reed's books, I, uh, I talked about him yesterday in my trash talking episode. I left a link to his channel. I heard from a lot of you. A lot of you have emailed and said, boy, I like, the, I like his channel. Thanks for the heads up. That's great. I'm glad to, glad to oblige. Good booktubers should always... Uh, if I find somebody who's doing this in a really entertaining way, I make sure, I try to make sure to let you know about him. Uh, but he threw me into a tizzy. He didn't mean to. But he threw me into a tizzy about what is and is not garbage. About what I can read innocently as garbage and not. He mentioned the Sword of Shannara. I've always known that the Sword of Shannara is not good, but... I've never really considered it trash. It's widely beloved. Uh, he mentioned John D. MacDonald. <laughs> he, mentioned, he mentioned the Travis McGee novels. I guess on one level I know they're trash. They're, they're, all, uh, they're blatant wish fulfillment. They're incredibly sexist and racist. They're, they're incredibly unlikely. I think they're written with a kind of minimal elegance. But... I, anyway, he threw me into a tizzy, and I like that. I like being in a tizzy about all my reading. But I needed to retreat to what uh, what the younger generation refers to as a safe space. I didn't want to be in a tizzy for the whole of Garbagas. So last night, I read a piece of trash about a giant killer shark. <laughs> that, that, that brought me straight back to my square space, with only a couple of tiny exceptions. All fiction about giant killer sharks is blissful trash not all examples a little had a little bit of a, a back and forth with an unassuming little mint julep about whether or not peter benchley's novel jaws is trash not all but most most books that on the garbagas bingo card killer animals is in fact one of the prompts most books that deal with ravenous killer animals you can reliably call them trash and i needed that after the turmoil that Joseph Reed's books threw me into, I needed that. So I, I found this on Kindle Unlimited. I found Michael Cole's book, Scar. <laughs> I am so there. Just the cover alone, I am so there. <laughs> uh, this is the story of a killer shark that has blended genetic material from a great white shark and a megalodon. A species of shark, a family of sharks that went extinct a long, long, long time ago. We have barely any fossil remains of megalodons and no genetic material. So this could not have happened. And even if we did have it, I, I know this is going to sound strange coming from me. Uh, but sharks, great white sharks in the ocean today are just large, hungry fish. They're just large, hungry fish. When you're swimming around in the water, when you're jumping off your boat so that your friends can film it and put it on Instagram, first of all, I guarantee you, there is a, an eight-foot tiger shark or an, an eight-foot great white shark within eyesight distance of you when you do that. You might not be aware of it. You might never be aware of it. They're probably cruising along the bottom, but they know you're there. And if that animal decided to flick its tail once, that will get it to 35 miles an hour underwater. It collides with you, takes off your left hip and the entirety of your left leg. Let's say, by some random chance, your friends manage to get you to a hospital before you bleed out. 
you still have a third of your body missing. That's never coming back. All because of one stupid decision on your part. The stupid decision being, fork Instagram to dive into shark-infested waters. <laughs> I don't get that. I don't get the, the surfing culture that goes out before dawn so that they can be surfing waves in the breaks right when sharks are hunting in the breaks as the sun comes up. Well, they go out at sunset and surf until it's dark. Crazy behavior. Just manifestly crazy behavior. And you might think, this, that because I've said all of that many, many times on this channel, that I'd be the last person in the world who would say this, but sharks are just fish. They don't have any evil intent. Sharks don't take things personally, Mr. Brody. <laughs> they, they don't have any evil intent. They aren't evil. And I can say, I've never met one, thank God, but I can say beyond a shadow of a doubt that megalodons weren't evil either. They were just animals. They were just fish. They were giant predatory fish. In other words, this where this construction here is made to make the look the thing look evil and now <laughs> now I, I michael cole has a little bit of leeway in this book because he can say that the trauma of mixing this genetic material did make scar a homicidal maniac certainly in the book scar the shark is a homicidal maniac he's evil he thinks and plans ahead of time he uh has his MasterCard payments on a payment plan. He, he, has, he keeps an eye on his IPA and his 401k. He's, he's a human supervillain, only he weighs two tons and is always present in the water. No matter where these characters are, I swear, in Chapter 1, we could have a character fall off a boat in the Florida Keys, and in Chapter 2, someone could fall off a trawler off the northern coast of, of Russia, and Scar would be right there in both cases. He must get such killer frequent flyer miles. Because he's the water water is equivalent in this book to Scar. And that wouldn't be true. <laughs> Earth is actually a water planet. A <laughs> shark is about is small in the size of a grain of sand to the whole of the planet. Uh, but Scar has a lot of bodies to his credit. He kills wantonly. He's helped in this regard because one of the weird little extras that he got from mixing genetic material of a megalodon and a great white shark is that he's bulletproof. Do you know of an animal that's bulletproof, Booktube? <laughs> he's bulletproof. You shoot him all you like. The bullets don't even hurt him. It's, you're going to have to come up with some other way to kill him. <laughs> maybe, maybe a buried electrical cord. I, so... If that's the case, and you hear that as the premise for this book, you might think, oh, okay. So this book is going to be all about uh, the NIA and the DHA and the DEA agents and their armaments that come to hunt this thing. With, with the latest equipment from the Ocean Oceanography Institute, it would be easy to track this animal, find it, and kill it. Yes, it's bulletproof, but it can still be extracted from the ocean. It's just a shark might be a big shark, might be a dangerous shark, but it's just a shark. So it'd be easy to extract it from the ocean and keep it for a study or something like that. And you'd be wrong. <laughs> you'd be wrong because uh, there's a gimmick. Uh, it was scoured into the reading subconscious by Stephen King, but also uh, in part by Peter Benchley's Jaws. Uh, in Stephen King, it's most noticeable. In, in Stephen King, there are vast, roiling, Lovecraftian Cthulhu monsters that are as big as solar systems. Their brains are cool and calculating, and those brains are billions of years old. They warp reality when they move through it. They disrupt the very basic forces that bind the universe together in order to craft the eldritch spells that will weave doom for all living things past, present, and yet to come. And they are opposed by a sheriff in a small town. In Stephen King, it's a sheriff in a small town. It's a sheriff in a small town. Always, 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 it is a sheriff in a small town. He's maybe got a little bit too much donuts on his midsection. Hasn't polished his badge in a while. Drinks a little too much. My wife left me last week. And he's reciting all of these things. Yeah, the, the, the young, the Yawans in town, they're, they're going to be a little bit noisy, but I deal, I try to deal with them, you know, uh, with an even hand. I got a deputy, but really, he's no use. And the whole, re the whole time that he's reeling off this biography, right next to him 
this towering Cthulhu monster is looking at his watch. In fact, he's looking at a hundred of them because they have a hundred tentacles that, that extend into the netherworld and can annihilate life by merely thinking about it. That giant Cthulhu monster is standing right next to the sheriff while he goes through his, his dumb F monologue that Stephen King has down pat. That monster is standing right next to him looking at his watch and saying, okay, well, why am I listening to this? I can annihilate this entire plane of resistance with a simple thought. Why do I care about a plucky sheriff? And yet, it's the sheriff. It's always, always the sheriff. Read submissions for a contemporary horror anthology and you will see what I mean. Literally all of them will feature a sheriff. <laughs> a sheriff. Not a chief of police in a city, but a sheriff. Literally all of them will. Because of Stephen King. Because he scoured that into the collective mind. Uh, and... Peter Benchley, to a lesser extent, did that with the beleaguered local chief of police. And believe it or not, that is Scar's opponent in this book. Not the four or five government agencies that would deal with Scar in about five minutes, but a beleaguered sheriff. <laughs> and his and the, the plucky people, the, the mother, the little boy, the, the, the idealistic oceanographer. <laughs> uh, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. It's, it's pure garbage. I believe pure garbage in, in a case where the author, Michael Cole, is very much in on the joke. Because you can't stop reading. And you're laughing the whole time. You're smiling the whole time. Even when, later in the book, you can laugh at, at garbage all you want. Sure. But if it's well done, then when the stakes are ratcheted up, you're still going to be on the edge of your seat. Even though it's garbage, you're still going to be on the edge of your seat. And I was. You, you laugh, you smile at this thing the whole time, but there is a rising, a rising action towards a climax, and there is a scary climax. It is, a, it is well done garbage. Well done, Michael Cole. You have restored my faith in trash, uh, which was shaken <laughs> just yesterday. It was shaken. So <laughs> I, I am back in the game. Now, the only question for me uh, for tonight's reading is, do I double down? Do I read another killer shark novel or a killer animal novel of some kind? Uh, or do I tentatively breach back out the risk of having my whole world overturned? <laughs> a lot of you were so funny about that video where I was saying that I was having an existential crisis. I swear so many of you get my sense of humor. <laughs> a lot of you were so funny in the comments of the video, but also in emails. A lot of you were so funny about <laughs> having an existential crisis over what constitutes trash. <laughs> so... Uh, so I, and I don't want to bring on that existential crisis again. So what do I do tonight? I don't know. I don't know. It's very early. I have all day. I pile up my night's reading during the day. We will see. You'll be the first to know tomorrow. As I once again, perhaps predictably, make an ongoing psychodrama out of an innocent book to prevent. <laughs> so there you go. Scar, uh, two fins way up. <laughs> I'm going to wrap this up for now, uh, but I'll be back. Thank you, book two.